guys! I'm Pixie. Welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna make this fancy character inspired by some photos. These photos. As you can see, it's some kind of Lolita made dress. In particular, this is Key Lolita style. If you don't know, this style represents Chinese traditional features combined with more European Lolita silhouettes. Lately, I started to bump here and there on photos of traditional Chinese dresses, which calls Kipao. And I came to an conclusion that I have to make a doll based on this dress, since those are for real very stylish. As model for this custom, I picked Kiyomi Hunterly from Monster High. She will suit this look perfectly, like no one else. And I'm going to hem all the edges of the patterns, starting with skirt and petite coat. Colors of this dress would be black and white. Design I would keep quite similar to that on the photos. Original reference I found on Pinterest and I thought that its design matched my idea just right. Since this doll would be inspired by a Kilolita dress and I like maids and also I like spooky creatures and stories, I have a solution for this one. Zhang Shi, also known as Chinese Hopping Vampire. Resurrected from the dead, creepy and deadly pale, perfect candidate for another monster into a family of monsters. This doll took me so little time to be made, but result is outstanding. Intrigued? Interested? Want to see more? Leave a like and subscribe to this channel to see more doll custom videos in the future. I'd highly appreciate it. And now back to the story. As you may notice, I gathered ruffles for a petite coat from a long stripe of white cotton and now I will attach them onto the skirts. Lolita style reminds me of cakes with a lot of layers and decorations, so I'd keep it that way. Sewing by the hands as usual. All edges hemmed or secured with thin coat of glue to prevent fringing. One of the special traits of the kipao dresses are their authentic forms. You will definitely recognize this style if you see it anywhere. These cuffs made of two halves that overlaps each other and creates one of these forms. Actually, variety of kipao designs is so wide, so anyone can find something for their taste. I just picked that one I thought would work for my doll best. Cuffs attached to the sleeves, ironed and I'm ready to jump to other piece. The collar. I don't think I nailed this one perfectly. It came out a bit too tall and a bit too wide, but I tried. I lined two color parts together and made a seam along the upper edge. With scissors I make small cuts along the inner space of the collar for better flexibility of this part. Now just turn it out and iron with heat to make it flat. Sticking corners trim with scissors. Top of the dress is quite mosaic and has both colors on it. By the neck it would be white and on the chest black. Sticking to specific order I connect all details of the top into one. Also, I made small mistake with top pattern, but it would be resolved later. If you can already say what's wrong, let me know in the comments. Now I press seams with fingers and after that with iron to flatten. Looks quite nice, but at this point I forgot where is back and where is front. On this part I confused myself completely, but continued to hem the top. I literally forgot it is front or is it back. I still have no clue what I am doing, because dress has fully open cut on the one side and partially open from the other end, you know? Finally, I decided that this shorter end would be front one, since Kipao usually works like wrap on the front. Before attaching sleeves on the top, I make few small pleats on them and fix them with stitches on place. Just like that. Now sleeves are ready for setting. Just like before, with hand stitching, I sew in slings into the armholes. Iron seams and make them stick on the place. So, the top is almost ready. Actually, assembling sleeves this way is so much easier and works for almost every top you can imagine.
iron. Iron every dang seem to keep it neat, my dudes. When it is neat, it's clean and clear. Great time to attach color into the neck hole. I'm starting from the middle and then sewing onto the sides. It will make color well centered. Press with heat to create prim stand color. On the keeper house, standing colors are one of the main accents. And here is a mistake. This front cut is too small for a doll to squeeze inside freely, so it should be redo. Another rush decision. I'd better leave those open. But still workable, not a big deal. For Lolita wipe, I wanted and forgot to add laces onto the cuffs. But I made my life harder one step back. Sewing those on the straight line would be so much easier. Fold top in half and close sides with stitching. This can be done with sewing machine pretty fast and easy, so if you have one, use it. Some minor imperfections of the pattern construction later can be fixed by trimming with scissors. Moving to the bottom part of the dress and starting with skirts. Fold it in half and make small cut in the front. Now hips of the doll would definitely fit into the dress and actually, if hips are fitting, then everything else would also for sure fit well. Now I'm creating loop from the skirt because it is not a standard back opening dress, but front opening, so it has a bit different construction. Creating similar loop with the white skirt. Place black skirt into the white one and align front opening. With thread of main skirt color, I gather both layers into a dense fold. This kind of gathering would help create puffy and voluminous dress. Puffiness of the skirts depends on wideness of original detail. The wider rectangle, the puffier. Also, fabric density shouldn't be too high, or it would be torture to work with. Same as color, I would now connect top with bottom of the dress, starting from the middle and moving to the sides. Base of the dress is complete, so big chunk of the work left behind. Into the front opening I will set a simple velcro. So now fun decoration part of the dress begins, and I'm starting with neck bow. I scrapped Lace's idea and switched to a ribbon. Again, do it better when everything is flat and straight, but at this point it is too late. This design is too new for me and I haven't made any mock-ups earlier. Luckily it worked fine for me this time. Lace's moved into the sleeve like on original design. I didn't make these ruffles myself, but just bought it in a craft store. Those are small and cute enough. Another Kipao peculiarity is special knots closures. But for a doll scale I made them more simple with short strips of the ribbon. Then I just sewed them up onto the dress. Looks cute and that's it about the dress. As additional element for this outfit, I will make pair of cutesy white bloomers for this doll. And sewing starts from the side seams. Now connect legs in the front seam. Hem back sides before moving next. Similar to a skirt, I'm creating small folds on the bottom of the bloomers. With iron, I carefully secure all folds on the place. Now sewing up back seam.
more ruffles for more Lolita. Fold bloomers in half in crotch area and make a seam. In the waist I also gather some folds. Instead of ruffles on the top I make a solid belt. Stick inside I trimmed a bit and bent inside to secure them with stitches. Almost ready with bloomers. Tie defaults makes everything better. Small thing left. Attach a snap and put some ribbon bows on the legs. So, this small piece of attire is now ready. Moving to the next one. You can actually guess that without this crucial piece of clothing no maid can do their look. The apron. Starting with hem in bow parts with heat iron. Then front piece. Similarly do the same with straps. Same laces as for the sleeves I attach to the apron. Bo has same construction as I did for the Alice Madness dress video. You can watch it later, just click in the corner, it has a link. Basically you just make a fabric sandwich and stitch it nicely. Measure waistline with belt. And sew up front piece to it. Straps I decorate with laces as well. Assemble straps with the rest of the apron. One snap for an apron to hold still. And that's actually it, only put in some ribbons left. Thin strip of pink ribbon I attach on the border of the apron. So bow goes on the back to make the day for this apron some Genshin wipe and to the shoes we go with some model black paint I'm covering majority of the shoes with white adding some made spark on them so cute, such made Remember that I like hats? Here is new one for you. I admit, I never made anything like this hat, so I don't know what I will get in the end. But let's just begin with brim. More about hat making you can watch in my pirate doll video. Her hat would be black and white as well, but with some color. Fold this brim in half and sew up into the loop. Turn it out and fold carefully. I bond non-woven fabric with top detail. Then trim excess. And make a pie pieces all over it. In a minute you will see why. Looks great, but would be better when flattened. When it is done, sew up the opening cut and move on. A little trim again. And... 
attach the brim just along the lead line. The base is ready. Instead of hemming it, I will just glue bottom edge inside and fix it with heat. A small white triangle detail just because it would much keep our aesthetic. Small pom pom for the top flying in. And more shinies just because I like Genshin so much. I said I like Genshin. Specifically, Kiki is one of my mains. So now you know. She was such a big chunk of reference for this doll. Amulet goes into the head and it's done. For the hair I failed doing buns, so split black and white pigtails it is. Those are made out of acrylic yarn and in my vision those are represent yin yang colors. So it is my favorite part now, talking and drawing. For this doll I made sketch for her eyes and I picked one with more tired phlegmatic look. I always thought that Jiangxia are ghosts or spirits, maybe because anime Shaman King and character of Jun Tao and Li Pyron made me think that way. But it turned out that Jiangxia are actually a corpses, or at least vampires, which are basically the same to me. So I revised my knowledge about this creature in process. I switched Trokulara to Kiyomi, because Jiangxi by one of the theories have to be unnaturally pale. But they can be actually even more like zombies, with all that crazy horror stuff you can imagine. Or be just like regular human being with no visible damages. So variety is pretty wide. Originally, Kiyomi face mold has heavily molded eyeliner wings on her. But few moments ago you may notice that there are no such things on face anymore. And that's because I cut and sanded those off to make my work easier with this doll. It is not my first Kiyomi I'm working with, so I can say those cute wings actually limit variations of makeups you can execute on this doll. I didn't want it limits on this doll, so I modded her face with fine sandpaper and quite amount of time and precision. And back to Jiangxi origins. If you translate first part of Jiangxi word from Chinese to an English, the meaning of it would be like stiff or hard. It is considered that Jiangxi are so numb that they can't bend their limbs, and the only way they can move is jumping forward with hands directed in front of them. The paper amulet on the forehead with sealing charm, King Empire loose feet and Kipao outfits, small hats with standing brim, came to us from a pop culture and created a recognizable image of Jiangxi for artists to play with. In one of the theories it also says that Hopping Vampires has greenish-white skin, because it is invaded with growing colonies of moss and mold on them. They has long face covering white hair and that they can behave themselves more as wild animals. Nowadays Jiangxi became more like a vampire, zombie or ghosts, with more of human personalities. For me personally, Kiki from Genshin is great example of transformed modern Jiangxi. For all Genshin nerds out there, now you know why Kiki is always doing her exercises. To be able to move freely. So, my maid Jiangxi is combination of my favorite things. Maids with their black and white roughly aesthetics. Kiki from Genshin because she's so cute. Exploration of the fashion styles verges. I learned so much about story and origins of Kipao and many Asian traditional outfits in general. So I think I will try to do more in future but for another countries. For now it is time for you to watch how I'm painting the face of this doll. Hope you will like the result. Stay with me to see a final footage. Subscribe and leave a like for support me and my art. Thank you in advance. And for me it is time to say, see you in the next video guys. Bye!
Instead of ruffles on the top, I make a solid belt. So solid. So solid belt. For the hair, I failed doing buns. So split black and white. Wife. Black and white. <laughs>